usually I'm all about the new year reset. I'm all about the new year, new me energy. That's my thing. Love it. Stick it in my vein. But for some reason for 2023, that just was not, I wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling that new year, new me energy. Something felt incredibly different for me for some reason. And I'm going to get into all of that in today's video. <laughs> Hey, my name is Queen. Welcome to the Mixed Vixen channel. Hey, boo, if you're new here, if you are not new here, thanks for coming back. I appreciate you. Before today's topic, I just want to say Happy New Year. Some of you have seen me already on the socials. Some of you did see me at the top of the month when I did my January live stream, but some of you may have not. So Happy New Year. I feel like you can say Happy New Year up until February. So Happy New Year new year there's also a written version of this video on the website if you want to check that out as well <laughs> for some reason this year i just was not in my new year new me bag it was really weird because it's just usually my thing before i get into why i was so anti-2023 reset and why the new year new me thing was just not my bag i do want to explain and talk about first how that period of time became something that was really, really important to me and something that I romanticized. So I started doing New Year's rituals maybe 10 years ago now. Yeah, probably about 10 years ago. And I'll do some other things just to commemorate this transition in time. Then as years went on, I began to add things to my ritual. So then I started doing vision boards and I started writing goals and I started writing intentions and I would have like a theme word for the year. All of this happened for me naturally and all of it was something that was very necessary and really affirming for me at that period of time. I don't really remember how and why I started adding these other pieces to my new year's ritual but it worked. It was really good with helping me stay optimistic, building my confidence and just really feeling good about the transition. It also gave me considerable faith on what the possible outcome can be for the next year. Then I started sharing these rituals that I have with my friends and family. I hosted vision board and affirmation set at workshop. It felt really good to see people enjoying the process that I created for myself and it's being also something that they can enjoy and take with them. And my workshops, they, they were great. We wasn't just cutting magazines and pasting stuff on boards or willy-nilly, it was something very, very intentional. Not to shade anybody who just be sticking stuff on a board, but I sound shady. But that's not what I mean to do, that's not my intent. It was a community building experience. I liked seeing vision boards becoming a more popular thing. I liked seeing intention setting. I liked seeing affirmations becoming this thing that people knew about. There was a time when I would say these words and people were like, what you talking about? And I'd explain it and they'll be into it. But it was nice to kind of say these things and talk about these things and people know exactly what I was talking about. What I love most about the process and also when I started to do these workshops was seeing black women and femmes come together to conceptualize and actualize the worlds that they wanted to live in. I'm a firm believer, very firm believer, that is the power of imagination that allows for us to keep this idea of liberation a living, breathing thing. Without an imagination, how do you imagine a world beyond what you see? How do you create systems and structures outside of the current systems and structures you live in if you don't have imagination. You have to believe there's life outside of white supremacist patriarchal capitalism. That's something that none of us, no one watching this video, has ever experienced. Well, unless you're a white man, but I don't, I don't think you're at my channel. I don't think you're here. None of us have seen or experienced what life on the other side of imperialism, white supremacy, patriarchy, capitalism, none of us know what life outside of that is, but it is the power of the imagination that's making us believe that that is at the other end of all of this BS. Doing all of these things for New Year's has been one of my deep, radical self-care things. Something that has helped me recharge, helped me pour into myself. It's in many ways helped me recharge my idea of hope and faith because the world is shitty. So when I'm home, being reminded of the many intersections 
of my marginalization, it is nice to have things around symbolize the world that I'm creating for myself. So having a vision board, having affirmations, I have them written all over. Like you see right here, like I have these things all over my apartment. I have these affirmations, I have these goals, I have these intentions. And with all those things, it pushes me to have the audacity to conceptualize all my desires. I love sharing that with Black Women's and Femmes. That is why I have this YouTube channel and why I do a lot of the work I do. But like I said, something happened and I wasn't feeling it. A global pandemic happened and something in the process just shifted for me. And I'm one of the people privileged enough to quarantine and work from home. But what that did was take away a lot of routine and took away a lot of the outside things that brought joy into my life. A lot of my life and a lot of my joys is about community and being around people. And I couldn't do that anymore. So what I did was I just started doing all of the rituals I did in the New Year, I just did them throughout the year. I didn't just sequester them to something I did the last week of December as a transition into the first day of the New Year. I was going in with my affirmations. I was constantly setting intentions. I read my Quran more. I did my, you know, the deep cleaning, the decluttering of your house. I started doing that. Now I do that every season. I go in with the decluttering and cleaning stuff because that's my thing. I'm like, I think I'm an extreme purger. I love to get rid of things. I'm now at a point where I just use any time of the year to do an inventory of my life, to examine what still works for me and what doesn't work for me. Some of my routines, some of my coping mechanisms may not be things I need anymore. So I get rid of them. So internally... I didn't need my 2023 reset like I usually do because I was doing so much of these things throughout the year. I've decided that now I conceptualize my desires daily. Every freaking day, I conceptualize the world I want. I conceptualize my liberation. I conceptualize me being a bad bitch. I realized that for myself and then I started thinking deeper because I'm a Virgo and we analyze every freaking thing. I asked myself a few questions about the collective, about black women and femmes as a whole. Are black women and femmes resetting for? Like this world is shitty. Like it's really fucking shitty for us. Why do black women and femmes need to reset for this? Are we resetting to recharge? Are we resetting so we can pour into ourselves? Are we resetting because we want to affirm our needs? Or are we resetting because we have fallen in the trap? And when I say we, I dead ass mean me too. Why are we trying to be better? Why are we always trying to be better? Who are we trying to prove this to? Who needs to know that we are valuable and worthy? Who is all of this for? Because even with all of this self-development, education, therapy, fitness, spirituality and religion, and what black women and femmes provide for community because we go in and we provide a lot. Why do we still feel the need for us on a personal level to keep improving when we already do so much? So because I had that thought and it's still pretty preliminary, I wanted to reframe my thinking around resets and rebrands and self-development and fresh starts and all of, all of that kind of language. And I challenge everyone watching this video to reframe your thinking about that too. Who are we being better for? Is it for you or is it for a system that doesn't care about you and never will? I want us to think about the fact that we are enough. We're enough. As you are, you are enough. I'm enough. You're enough. You have done so much so far. You will do more. You are thriving during a global pandemic because that's what we're still in. That's, you know, they trying to act like we not, but we are. I want us to chill out. I want us to stop picking ourselves apart. We don't need to improve. Not black women and femmes. We are the standard. 
We are the blueprint. Everybody wants to be us. So why are we still doing all these things to reach a standard that I think unattainable? And it's unattainable because it's not a standard that we created for ourselves. We're the standard that everyone aspires to. You're a black woman. You're a black femme. You got this. You don't need to do a complete 180 with your life to be proud of who you are. You don't need a rebrand, boo. You good. So I said I rejected the New Year reset. I said I was anti-New Year reset. So what did I do this year? I still made a vision board, but it was a really simple one from a Canva template. And all I did was my theme for the year is bliss. I only want to do things that make me feel blissful. That is it. So bliss is my theme. I look for pictures that reminded me of bliss and blissful moments and blissful moments that I want to have. Stuck it in that Canva template. And now that's my laptop screen saver. That is all I did for this year. And it feels like enough. And it doesn't have to be anything intensive. I don't have to write a list of extensive goals. Not doing that. Not doing that. I do it all year. I just make it a part of my everyday. I think that Black Women and Femmes need to take the pressure off of ourselves about being better, being better people, being the optimal kind of Black person. Let that shit go. Let it go. We don't need it. So we reached the end of the video. I do want to know what you did for your New Year reset or what you did not do for your New Year reset. And I want to know if maybe I changed your mind and you now realize, you know, it is mid-January and you didn't do anything. And I hope you leave this video knowing that that's okay. It is fine. Totally fine. Quick thank you to the patrons. It's really dope. The people who monetarily support Ms. Vixen, you help me keep this going. If you'd like to become a patron, you can do that by using the link in the description box. Lots of goodies there if you become a patron. And I close this by saying, you are a bad bitch. You are enough. Stay fly. And I will see you in the next video.